Well, good morning, everybody. Hey. And good morning, all these uh, purple kids out here. That's great. Hey, listen, thank you all for joining us at the State House this morning for this, uh, this important event. Uh, my name is Todd McCaffrey. I'm the South Carolina Secretary of Veterans Affairs. So on behalf of Governor McMaster and Superintendent Weaver, who's behind me here, thank you so much for coming today for the recognition of this proclamation highlighting the start of the month of the military child. Now, the month of the military child actually starts in April, but we're a couple days in advance. We're getting ready early for it, so uh, we appreciate you all, all coming out there. We are joined by a lot of leaders, and you can see them, many of them arrayed here behind me. Of course, the governor, Superintendent Ellen Weaver from our, our state superintendent of education, uh, Representative Celeste Davis, of course, and I know there's other members, uh, General Van McCarty out here for the, for the military department, the National Guard, Director Kevin Schwedo is over here and Secretary or Superintendent of Charter Schools, Chris Neely, amongst others, are here. So uh, thank you all for making out and folks, and most importantly, thank you for these children who come out here who represent uh, so much about our military and our military children. Like others from military families, my three children grew up moving every two to three years, changing schools, making new friends, and dealing with the challenges that arose from a lifestyle that they did not choose, but it's one that was chosen for them. My wife, Lisa, who's also here this morning, uh, did what so many other military spouses do daily. She cared for and provided stability for our children in an environment that often seemed rather unstable. That is the ongoing experience of military children across our state and our nation. So while the realities of frequent moves and deployments certainly created challenges for my own children, if they were here now, and fortunately they're all adults well adjusted out of the house, um, I would believe they would also highlight that those events helped them become more resilient, develop social skills in making new friends, and provided them with an appreciation of new environments that continues into their adulthood. Our attention on military children in April helps us focus on ways to reduce the obstacles and find the positives of a lifestyle to which over a million and a half children participate every day across our nation. So thank you again as we celebrate this important proclamation today. And I'm appreciative of both Governor McMaster and Superintendent Weaver's continued advocacy for our military children and families, and excited to see these children highlighted during their month and throughout the entire year. Uh, both of these leaders behind me remain stalwart supporters of our military and their families who also serve. So it's now my pleasure to pass the mic to our State Superintendent of Education, Ellen Weaver. Superintendent. Thank you, General. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Secretary McCaffrey. It is such an honor to be here today, and this is a, a personal joy for me because, boys and girls, did you know I have a nephew named Jackson who I am going to get to see today, this afternoon, and his daddy was in the Army for 18 years, and so Jackson knows firsthand what it is like to be a military child, and so this is a very special and personal celebration for me. We in South Carolina are so proud of our military families and our military students and our commitment to you is that we are going to work all day every day to continue to make this the very best state in the country for our military families especially when it comes to education we know that when someone is stationed here we have to ensure that they have confidence in the school that they are sending their most treasured possession their children to and so that is our commitment is that we are doing everything we can all day every day to make sure that our schools have the same level of expectation and excellence that we know is represented by our military. Here in South Carolina we have 12 school districts that are designated as Purple Star districts and we also have a charter school, Liberty Steam and Sumter, that was recently designated. Yes, they are here in the house. And so we had a wonderful opportunity last legislative session to ensure that we were moving barriers, removing barriers to enrollment for our military families who are transitioning here. So that's one really concrete step that we have taken in the last few years to make it better for our military families, easier for our militaries to transition seamlessly to South Carolina. And even today, as we speak this afternoon, there's going to be a hearing in our Education and Public Works Committee to allow charter schools like Liberty STEAM to give preference up to 20% of their enrollment 
two military families. Again, to ease that transition to ensure that our military families have access to the very best education that South Carolina can offer. And so with that, I want to close by talking to our boys and girls who are here today. I want you to know that we know you are strong, you are smart, you are resilient. You are the very best that America and South Carolina has to offer. We are so proud of you, and we are so committed to your education, and we are so thankful to have you and your mom and dad here today. Thank you very much. Governor, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Ms. McMaster, Peggy and I are happy to be here as well, and I think about these children, military children, moving so often during while they're growing up. And I reflect on, on our children, we, we moved once from Green and Barnwell to Senate and Barnwell, a total of, of three blocks away right here in Columbia. That was, a, that was an easy transition there. And I look at these children full of promise and great future, and you, some folks go to the fortune teller to, to see the future. Well, I think we, we can see our future right here. If you look at these children, that is our future. And as Ellen Weaver says, it's important that they're educated, they're comfortable, and, and that they're, they're safe. And we are determined to see that that happens. Uh, I also want to recognize uh, Celeste Davis, who's standing behind me, who's the, the, the chair of the Military, Medical, Municipal, and uh, Public uh, uh, Committee. And she is greatly responsible for a lot of the progress that we've had along with, with, with other leaders. So with that, I have a proclamation to read. And I will read, State of South Carolina, Governor's Proclamation, whereas in 1986, former Defense Secretary Casper Weinberger designated the month of April as the month of the military child, an opportunity to recognize the contributions and personal sacrifices our military children make in support of the United States Armed Forces while their parents serve our nation. And whereas military children are a source of pride, earning our appreciation for the significant contributions they make in our schools, our communities, and throughout our state, despite prolonged and repeated absences by one or both parents. And whereas, because the average military student faces transition challenges more than twice during high school, and most military children will attend six to nine different school systems throughout their lives from kindergarten to the 12th grade, the military Interstate Children's Compact Commission is committed to resolving the educational transition issues that are faced by these children and their families, ensuring that they are afforded the same opportunities for educational success and opportunity as other children and are not delayed in achieving their educational goals. And whereas the commitment to educational quality for military and veteran Connected Children in South Carolina is a team effort among the South Carolina Department of Education, the South Carolina Military Interstate Children's Compact Commission, the South Carolina Department of Veterans Affairs, the South Carolina Military Base Task Force, the South Carolina National Guard, and the Military Child Education Coalition. That's a lot of working together right there. And whereas the Purple Star Program has, gone in, has grown into an international initiative that recognizes schools and districts, in including, excuse me, including nine school districts in South Carolina that a, adopt a set of criteria to ease the transition to new schools and communities for military children and enhance their educational experiences. And whereas, this final paragraph, the 2024 observance of the month of the military child provides an opportunity to pay tribute to the thousands of military children in South Carolina who, through their strength and resilience, are the heart and soul of the military family. Now, therefore, I, Henry McMaster, governor of the great state of South Carolina, do hereby proclaim April 2024 
as the month of the military child and encourage all South Carolinians to recognize the duty we have to support these military children and their families and also encourage all school districts with children of active duty reserve or National Guard families to become Purple Star Schools to better understand and meet the needs of military children across our state, to honor the courage and sacrifices of our military children who so faithfully uphold the American spirit and to remember that when parents serve the military, their children serve as well. Signed by me, Henry D. McMaster, your proud, happy governor, on behalf of 5.37 proud, happy South Carolinians. We thank you. And I know a lot of you children are about to have birthdays or just have one, but we have one of our older children who's having a birthday today, and there she is. So if you'll join me, please, in happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ellen. Happy birthday to you. Okay. And, and on behalf of the 15,000, over 15,000 military connected children in South Carolina, thank you for this and for the priority that you put on our military families every day. All right, we'll go ahead and open the floor for questions. All the hard ones go to the governor. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Certainly. So um, as we mentioned before, the enrollment barrier is something that has been a big point of friction for our families who are transitioning in. Oftentimes it's in the middle of the school year and they may not have a piece of mail that has their new address on it and yet they need to get their child enrolled so that child can transition seamlessly into a school. So that's one very, it's seemingly small but practical and important way that we're breaking down those barriers. I think for every student in our state, literacy is the most important gift that we can give a child. And so so ensuring that all literacy instruction in South Carolina is aligned to the science of reading is something that we'll be celebrating with the governor tomorrow, um, but it's another gift that we here in South Carolina are committed to giving our military students. If I could comment, with you, first of all, I'll tell you with the uh, leadership of the governor, the, the superintendent, of course, uh, Celeste Davis in the back here. Last year, the, the, the General Assembly, the governor signed remote school enrollment, which allows military families upon receipt of orders that are coming to South Carolina to enroll their kids in advance. That's a huge issue. Having gone through my family many times, you would arrive at a new duty station and then have to, at the end of the line, get your kids enrolled in school. If you can do that early, you can get your kids in a position to couple that with now charter school preference options. That's a huge issue for these military families and the families will follow them coming to South Carolina. So we're really proud of that. I think it's been a huge issue for our military families. More questions? Yes, sir. So I think that charter preference bill is going to be very important. Another thing that um, we have done is make sure that we're equalizing funding to support those students that are in charter schools, and we've made huge um, strides in that over the last few years. But I really think that in a lot of ways we can't discount the need for community understanding and engagement. I think one of the most important things that we can do, not only for our military children, but for every child in South Carolina, is to engage our local civic clubs. I was in a school in Richland 2 this morning, which Richland 2 is an incredible example of a Purple Star District that is doing wonderful things to serve our military families, is actually led by a former military leader now in Dr. Kim Moore. But a local Rotary Club was there to read to students. They have four students that they mentor. And so I think finding new ways to connect our community and tangible ways to support students and teachers in the classroom is maybe one of the most meaningful things we can do, not only to support our military students, but every student in South Carolina. The only thing I would add, I would like to recognize the National Guard on this because we often talk, you know, many of these kids here are representative of our active duty bases, Fort Jackson, the Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Shaw Air Force Base, but we have National Guard soldiers and airmen that serve across the state. And so, you know, Superintendent Weaver talked about Purple Star schools and how important they are to help a school leadership understand the challenges military children face. Those challenges are not, are not isolated to these kids from active duty. They're also facing from, from General McCarty and his team 
as they deploy members of the National Guard, you know, often those kids are leaving a school where they're, they're not a huge number of military kids. So they're, they're confronted with their own challenges. So the other piece is you're representing schools. Please encourage Purple Star School enrollment from, our, from other school districts. There may not be you know, where our military bases are, but there may be where our National Guard has families serving. Uh, and that's a huge issue in South Carolina and, and frankly, across the nation. Yes, sir. Well, I, I guess yeah. I can. I've been there, Governor. It's uh, okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, okay. And Liberty Steam gave me an awesome letter jacket that I have proudly displayed in my office. So, yeah, fantastic, y'all. Your school is awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.